Watch me and my best friend convert this attic space. Time for our next project, turning this garage space into an office and workshop. This is going to be the workshop space, kind of like a girl garage 2.0. We're going to set up all the tools and cute stations. And then upstairs, we're going to turn into a magical office. It needs electrical, insulation, a heater, and so much more. But this is what I'm turning it into. Follow along to see if I can make it happen. We're back in this magical office. It's going to be magical. And today I'm installing the electrical. Let's talk about the electrical plan. So I wanna put three like flush mount lights. So I'm gonna to have to run some new wire. So I've already taped off where I want some outlets to go and I'm gonna redo these lights. Okay, I will show you how to install them. You just measure where you want it on your stud. You hold it up there. Here, I'm running some new wire for the lights. I'm fishing it through the top. So my dad was actually an electrician and that's how I learned to do all of this, but I definitely recommend getting a professional if you're in over your head. You'll never regret spending money on electric and plumbing. Hey buddy, do you want to install some insulation? You can do it, I can watch. Okay, time for some insulation. So I'm adding this foam board in between the studs before I put bat insulation because it's just siding and there's air gaps and it can let moisture in. So I'm just stapling that on, cutting it to size. So you actually have to find out how your roof is vented before you just stuff insulation up there and drywall. Um, you need to know if you have a ridge vent and if there are air channels. So my roof, I need to create a little channel for air to be able to flow up between the insulation and the roof so things don't mold. So I'm cutting foam board panels into long two inch strips. I would definitely not recommend this styrofoam. It was horrible to work with. You can see the little pieces everywhere. But using these strips is a cheaper way to create an air channel at the back. With those cut, I'm attaching them to the roof, one on each side and then one in the middle using construction adhesive. This is going to allow air to flow from the base of the roof up to the point, AKA the ridge vent. So I'm just gluing these pieces on into each section. You wanna use construction adhesive here because if you use nails, it could shoot through your roof and out the top of your shingles, creating lots of holes, which is no good. Here's me laying on the floor crying because this was actually so intense. So this is called a radiant heat barrier. It's essentially double-sided bubble foil that I'm stapling in front of that air channel I created. This is gonna keep the heat in in the winter and out in the summer. This creates that air channel and now I can add normal insulation on the top. Okay, I'm putting on this really cute outfit so that we can do some insulation. Um, it's so itchy if you haven't done it before. I used to crawl around in hot attics with my dad fishing wire, so I don't want to touch it. We did enough of that in our life. I'm going to wear this. And we're going to put up the insulation. So these rafters are 24 inches apart. We didn't have any insulation in my store that is that wide. So I'm having to cut it, which is horrible. But I'm just cutting one in half and then taping it on a little bit before I shove it up there. And that's been working well. And then you just staple it. Um, I'll show you how it goes. I had to tape one and a half pieces together because they weren't wide enough, but once I had that done, I just stapled it inside each of the rafters um, and stuffed it up there. Okay, the insulation is up. Uh, I still have to do that wall, but I'm going to start putting beadboard panels up. Um, I'm using a stapler, a crown stapler, because if you use just pin nails or bad nails on beadboard, they usually go straight through. So using a stapler, and we're just going to stick it up all by herself and it's super heavy so wish me luck i was truly so hopeful that i could just slap some beadboard on this insulation and have a finished space but as you can tell it's not easy and it's not going well um it was just too wobbly and heavy for one person so eventually i took the hint and decided we needed drywall in this space to have something to attach to and I figured out how to do that myself by using a jig that I attached to the studs, um, lifted it up, slid it in the jig, and then I was able to screw it into the studs. It's basically like a little one by two board and then a board on the front. You sink it into studs like there, 
and there and then when you're putting the sheetrock up by yourself you just slide it behind there and it holds it while you hold this end and screw it all in so the jig is a one by two board and a one by four board glued together with wood screws and then just pre-drill the holes where you can put some long wood screws through for the studs. Even with the jig, these angled walls are rough. So here's more embarrassing footage of me trying to get this board into the jig. It was just really challenging because it was down low and it's not like a vertical wall, it's like angled. So this is me fighting for my life under this sheet of drywall. How is this my real life that I'm wearing white pants rolling around on this floor? I've been struggling so hard to do this garage alone, got a little help with some drywall, and now I have the most help. <laughs> the strongest person in the world. We're gonna put up the beadboard and it's gonna be so easy. Okay, so beadboard round two, it's going on drywall. We have glue and Jesse with cute hair. It's gotta work, right? The construction adhesive is super important since it's going on like a slanted wall so it doesn't fall down. So we strategized and we got double nail guns but spoiler alert, it still wasn't easy with two people. And the first one kicked our butt. I promise we know what we're doing. These slanted walls are just really difficult. But we don't call ourselves unstoppable DIYers for nothing. We're going to make this happen. It's very hot in here suddenly. We're crushing it. We have four sheets up. Putting glue on here. Oh, high kick for the win. Oh, let's see it. <laughs> let's see it. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to you. But here's my top secret trick. I she has no secrets. If you put it in a circle, when you smash it up against the ceiling, it makes a suction cup. And I'm really confident that this is helpful. Flies, flies. I think it really works. She likes me. Boobs all the Five boobs per sheet. I don't think it is. <laughs> See your high kick. It's your time to shine. High kick. you do this. Beadboard can bow and ripple, so we recommend using a lot of nails, shooting them into the studs, or crossing them if you're going into areas that have drywall. You can't use too many. Seriously, use a lot. So at this point, we're like exhausted and sort of delusional, but luckily, Jesse has some motivational songs to keep us going. Get up your, get on your feet. <laughs> I'm trying. Get up and make it Projects are hard and long and fun if you have someone to do it with. Okay, so for this part, I'm gonna do a beam and I've added like a two by two board so I have something to drill into. Three inch wood screws driven into the studs. And then I have this one by eight piece of oak and I'm gonna drill holes for the light fixtures and then pop it up. I'm using this. It's really for drywall. You'll see why in a second. Yeah, you can't cut wood with this, but I'm using it because I wanted to make a perfect circle outline. Then plunge cut with my jigsaw to cut out a beautiful circle. This is red oak, a 10 foot piece, and I'm going to fit the lights through here so it looks like a beam. See the vision? So for the most part, if it's a two person job, you can replace the other guy with a ladder. Just screw it up. I added construction adhesive, installed some lights, and there it is. 
I was gonna refinish these floors, but then I thought, what if I just cover them up with a dark gel stain so that they look new and polished, but I don't actually have to sand anything. Gel stain is oil-based, it takes a few days to dry, and I just brushed it on with a pretty thick coat. I didn't wipe it off, and it took like four or five days to fully cure. It kept a little character of the super old wood floors, but gave them a new finish. Okay, time for furniture. For a desk, I actually decided to use this dining table since it would give us a lot of space to spread out. We always have all kinds of like design elements and swatches. I got us these really cute chairs that have tuck away ottomans. So there's lots of options for rearranging, pulling chairs up to the table or lounging as if we ever have time to lounge. But then I got this really cool coffee table. It's like a black stained stump and then it has like a gold accent in the middle. It looks really good with the floors and the table and kind of ties them all together. Everything in here is linked in the description. And that's the real life story of how I made this into this. I honestly can't believe this is the same room at all. It is so magical up here. Even with a super low ceiling, all this furniture really works to make the space usable. We love working at our table or sitting around the little coffee tables. And sometimes when your dream home doesn't have the space you want, you have to get creative and make it yourself.